Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Progeny Podcast. Today, my guest is Sayyid Hassan Al Sadr. Sayyid Hassan Al Sadr was born in Iraq. He studied medicine at St. George's University of London and is currently working as a consultant in London. He has run many sessions for youth focusing on moral values and development. Sayyid Hassan believes in faith having a pivotal role in developing society and that God-centricity can solve many of the challenges faced by mankind. His lectures focus on rationality, spirituality and activism. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidna, thank you for joining us on this special episode of the Progeny podcast during the holy month of uh, Ramadan. For me, Sayyidna, Shahar Ramadan is a, is a beautiful month. For me, it's probably the, the favorite time to spend with your family, a good time to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, what does the holy month of Ramadan mean to you, Sayyidna? Alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Hajji. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. My pleasure, Sayyidna. To speak during this uh, holy month. Um, the month of Ramadan, for me, it represents hope. Mm. Um, as the Prophet ﷺ said in his famous sermon um, before the beginning of the month of Ramadan, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّهُ قَدْ أَقْبَلَ إِلَيْكُمْ شَهْرُ اللَّهِ بِالْبَرَكَةِ وَالرَّحْمَةِ وَالْمَغْفِرَةِ For people, the month of Allah has approached with three things. Mm. Baraka, mm. blessings, Rahma, mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maghfira, forgiveness. In baraka, I see uh, nothing but hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us uh, during this holy month that the magnitude of what we do can be uh, multiplied, can be increased significantly beyond even our imagination. Um, this increase in the and the effect and the impact and the magnitude of what we do really brings hope to humanity, to us all. Whatever we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place barakah in it. In fact, it's the first description that the Prophet said this month will bring to you. It will bring to you barakah. Whatever you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just multiply. And one might ask, but what exactly um, are we hoping to get out of it? Mm. What, what, what's the hope? Yeah. Uh, well, it brings uh, brings to mind the main question of why we are here. What is the purpose of this life? Now, in our in our views, uh, as uh, believers, as followers of the Islamic faith, as people who believe in divine guidance, we believe that the purpose of this life is to use it, live it to the max to get to the real life. This is temporary. Exactly. Temporary uh, in the sense that you don't ignore it, you must live it. Of course. You must live it to the max. Uh, you must maximize your potential in this life to really have the, the, the real status, the real you in the hereafter. And in fact, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, in, the, in the same uh, sermon, the same khutbah, uh, after he describes the, uh, the barakah of this month, or, mm. uh, and now people, alhamdulillah, have fasted many days and they've seen, inshallah, the barakah, whether inshallah. it's the breath, the sleep, the small good deeds they do. Uh, the Prophet reminds us very quickly at the beginning of that sermon about the purpose of this life. He says, وَذْكُرُوا بِجُوعِكُمْ وَعَطَشِكُمْ Okay, straight away to the day of judgment. Exactly. Mm. Now, of course, this the, the the next statement speaks about charity and helping those in need. Mm. However, I know people refer to the month of Ramadan and fasting about charity and help. It is there. Mm. However, before that, one must remember that this is nothing but a yet another stage of preparation for the day of judgment. As God-centric people, we must have that insight all the time. That we live this life to the maximum. We use all its potential in order to increase our potential level, our potential status in the hereafter. 
and the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as as we said will place barak in everything we do so that we you know we get a, a boost in our status uh, in the hereafter that's where we want to be um, and also it brings hope and uh, sorry not also the manifestation of that hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our, our hope should always be in Allah and in Allah alone but also it demonstrates it reveals the good potential of who we are as people now, the month of Ramadan brings all the goodness out of people the first thing that uh, our non-Muslim colleagues and friends say to us whilst we're fasting is how do you guys do it? Mm. It shows you that those millions of people who are Muslims, people, uh, can do it, and others can do it as well. It just shows you how what the real potential, the good potential of, of people. You can fast, you can abstain from food and drink for so many hours, and you can also perform so many uh, honorable acts, whether it's praying, praying at night, recitation of the Quran, volunteering, charity, uh, reaching out to those friends and family and extended family who we have you not been in contact with, Salat al-Raham, mm. um, abstaining from um, acts, from words, from actions that bring your status down. You know, all these sins are, are nothing but uh, acts that we, in, we, we commit, we indulge in, and we, we, we soon realize how much we have regressed. Temporary pleasure, like Amir al-Mu'mneen, the gate of the knowledge, uh, the gate to the city of knowledge of the Prophet, says you will soon uh, see how temporary the pleasure is and how lasting the pain mm. will be after you commit those sins. During the month of Ramadan, as we have lived through so many and we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that yet we have another opportunity, we see we see our real potential, that we can be better than this. We can be better than the 11 months. A lot, a lot, sometimes you think, um, you know, I can't, I can't stay away from certain sins or um, certain words maybe that I say that I know I shouldn't or certain acts. Like for example, maybe some youth face... Um, a music issue where they, they listen to music and then come the month of uh, Ramadan they stop listening to music even Muharram come the, those two months they stop listening and then they go back to it and I tell them if you can do it for a month or two months a year why can't you do it for the rest of the 11 or 10 months so it's, 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 it's like again sometimes we fall into this trap because you were saying now you know where, where you feel spiritual sometimes you fall into the trap where you become a Shahar Ramadan, Shahar Muharram, Muslim only. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is unfortunate. We, we all fall into this okay. uh, trap mm -hmm. that we 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 enjoy mm. this higher spiritual status when we are in charge, and for the rest of the time we we let our gods down and and we surrender to the self centric model of life. Um, however. Just like I said before, there's hope. So you, you, you said something that I want to... You said live to the max. Of course. Of course. What's your definition? Because someone else's definition of live to the max is... I'm sure of course. Is, I, what's your definition of live to the max? On purpose, I chose these yeah, words. So on purpose. What's your definition of course. Of that? Had you, on purpose, I chose these words because there's a lot nowadays in... And entertainment and social over all over social media it's about maximize you know life live it to the max it's short just make the most out of it of course you Yolo. have to do this but you have to do it in the right way mm. life is full of opportunities of goodness of khair it's not about enjoyment it's about happiness and there's a big difference between temporary enjoyments and lasting happiness you see the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam alayhi salam Babu Madinat al-Ilm the gate to the city of knowledge which is the Prophet the gate to his knowledge he says describing this life man abasara biha basaratuhu 
ومن أبصر إليها أعمته He tells people look when it comes to this life look through it look using it don't look at it if you focus on it من أبصر إليها if you focus on it and it on its temporary pleasures أعمته you'll be blinded but if من أبصر بها but if you use it to see if you use this life to the max to see بصرته you will have that penetrating vision you will see the truth you will see reality so you must utilize all the good opportunities out there you, just like you know just like the eyes i mean i'm i'm, I'm a doctor mm. right so i'm fully aware that sight human sight is one of the is one of the um, uh, it's one of the evidences it's a clear evidence of the metaphysical aspect of the human being because what actually sees is not your eyes is not even your brain it's something metaphysical mm-hmm. right because the light signal the photons they get transformed in the retina in the back of the eye into electric signal and that's the only mode that stays in electrical signal even when it reaches the back of the brain so where is the image where is that seeing where's sight al basar it's somewhere else mm. okay so just like you use your eyes to see with them you see with your eyes you use this life to see you look through it you look using it but you focus on the reality the reality which is the hereafter so you must live this life to the max amir al mu'minin also describes this life you know uh, this hayat al dunya and dunya has two potential meanings either could mean proximal near to you or it could mean the lower life he describes it as daru sidqin liman sadaqaha it is the the dimension it is the abode of truth for the for those who are genuine and he follows with wadaru afiyatin liman fahima anha wadaru ghinan liman tazawwada minha this abode this dimension is full of potential wealth as long as you you take of it you you, you use you know tazawwadu take from it increase your potential wealth from it in order to reach that that higher daraja not in order to just escape hell the the hellfire uh, this model that's in the minds of so many people out there that you are created to either go to heaven or hell is not true it's not true according to the quran according to our ulama according to our maraj mm. of course hellfire is a reality heaven is a reality but the aim is not to end up either in heaven or hell the aim is to end up in heaven and there are so many stages and levels in in heaven that you you know you want to maximize your zad your wealth to elevate your status in heaven in surah al uh, in surah al muddathir one of the very early chapters of the quran revealed to the prophet the believers in heaven they would be asking each other they would be asking afwa not each other they would be asking the disbelievers not non-believers disbelievers those who reject the truth there are so many people out there who don't know about the truth so you describe them you describe them as non-believers mm. but the quran speaks about al-kafirun those so who dis- reject they know they've seen the evidence but they've rejected but they've rejected it says ma salakakum fi saqar so the believers are talking to the criminals to the wrongdoers what has brought you to the hell how did you end up here exactly because the expectation is that everyone should end up in heaven heaven so you are the exception not we are the exception we got here because that's exactly where everyone should be heading you are the exception the exception is those you end up in the hellfire ma salakakum fi saqar what has brought you to the hellfire qalu lam nakun min al-musallin we did not uh, uh, fulfill our duties and prayers towards allah and obviously other things so this life we must live it to the max but we live it with our eyes fixed on the final abode 
on the different levels, the darajat. You know, the, the word darajat, stages or levels, has been mentioned in preparation for today's discussion. I just looked up very quickly. 14 times in the Quran, Allah says there are levels, there are darajat. So people, mankind, live to the max in order to get as high as possible during in, in those darajat. Elevate, elevate, keep elevating. So live it to the max. Amir al muminin says this is this life is Masjidu Ahibba Illah. I know we there's a common theme in which we talk down about this life. Mm. And of course Amir al muminin the Prophet, the Imams, they also have, have used such description descriptions to bring down this life only to remind people not to indulge in its temporary pleasures however there are other clear descriptions praising this life which is why i'm saying live it to the max praising it it's the masjid just like the masjid is the is the platform it's the place assigned to us to worship allah and to, to focus on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this life is exactly this for us it's the masjid of those who are in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa musalla malaikatullah. It's mm. the place where the malaika perform their salah. So it's full of potential. We must maximize our potential. We must see through it, use it to look at the final abode, to the darajat, and maximize our levels, inshallah. Inshallah. So that's living to the, to, to the max. Can, and then this leads me to ask you, can you live to the max being someone who's self-centric no no you have to be uh, obviously in our understanding of the world there are people out there who will disagree with us yep um but in our understanding you must continue to strive we all must continue to strive to be as god-centric as we can Sorry to interrupt. You, you, I, in my last um, presence at one of your talks, you mentioned God-centric and self-centric. Can you define them before we... Okay. What does it mean to be God-centric? What does it mean? How do you see this world? This reality that's around us? Mm. How do you see it? Do you see it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the Lord in charge? He created us. We belong to him. We are his slaves few weeks ago I was holding a discussion with a group of Shabab in South London mm. and I used the term servants and slaves. So one of the very young brothers, very young, said probably nine or ten, said to me, do you mean servants or slaves? Which ones? Because they're different. Mm. I said to him, you are right. I should be specific. It's slaves. We are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are we belong to Allah. We are the slaves of Allah and Allah is the absolute perfection. So we are the slaves of the absolute. We are the slaves of the truth. Okay, so do you see the world as a creator, slaves of Allah, slaves of the truth? And therefore life must revolve around the will of Allah. He's given us the choice, but do you see the world as there's a creator that's present and you should... Always strive to assign, to align, Afwan, to align your will with with his will. At every single point, you're about to make a decision. What to say, what to look at, how to reply, what to do. There's always the will of Allah and there is your will. Are you always trying to align your will with his will? That means you're God-centric. God-centric. Alternatively, if you ignore him, if you dismiss the reality of his presence, then it becomes all about you, all about me, self-centric. It's my life. This is my body. I'm in charge of it. It belongs to me. Then it's all about my choices, my feelings, what I want, what I like. And then my life revolves around me. We don't agree with that. We say we belong to Allah. Allah created us. This body, you know, belongs to the Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who decided on our who our parents were, which 
century we were born in, uh, you know, the, the, the color of our skin. He decided on everything. We belong to him and he has given us free will. God-centric model is the right model. God's will is perfect, is right. And people, we should be trying to align our will with his will all the time. So when it comes to a discussion between you and one of your parents, and then suddenly becomes heated, and you want to say something, you want to say something because you, f- you, you, know, you feel this is, this is what should be said. But at that moment in time, if you have spent time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during salah, during prayer, recitation of the Quran, if you surrounded yourselves with people who remind you about him, you will remember him. And you will remember that his will is lower lower your side of humility. Don't even say off. Lower your voice. Don't even look with an angry look at them. من حد النظر إلى والديه لن لم يقبل الله صلاته. The one who looks, uh, uh, the one the one who gives a his parents a harsh look, Allah will not accept their his or her prayers, right? So at that moment in time, you remember him, and then despite the fire that's in your you know inside you, it's boiling. You want to say something, you hold your tongue back, you say something else. That's you aligning your will with his will. You make it sound so easy, Sayyid. It's, it's, it's challenging for us yeah. because we are early in the journey. Hajji, what will happen eventually, inshallah, sooner for the respected audience than people like me, sooner to them than, than, than me, it, what will happen is that they will, they will develop this malaka. Okay, so early in the journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will always have this clash or friction between self-centric, what I want, and what Allah wants, God-centric. طبعاً, there is uh, the foundation, the fitra, is, you know, it's in line with God's, God's will, but we're going into some complex choices right, and decisions. That's where you really need his uh, to know his will so you can align yourself with it so early in the journey you there always this the, this clash you're trying to uh, match his will you're trying to align yourself with his will however with time with practice in some aspects they will develop it you will develop as an individual harmony between your will as a human being and his will. Mm. You become <coughs> it becomes natural. Ahsant. You become a godly person yeah. in those aspects that you've worked on. So it becomes like a habit, a malaka. It comes out, just comes out naturally that you don't have this clash or struggle. Your will is his will because you've trained yourself, you've worked hard for a long time and you've seeked his help and the barakah from him. So, and you're left with other aspects of life. You know, some of us are good at this with our parents, but we're not very good with our spouses, for example. We're good with the parents and the spouse, but we're not so good with the neighbors, with the others. We're good in abstaining, for example, from haram music, but we're not good at abstaining at other things, other haram content. So, you... Um, we should not be tricked to feel that, okay, I've mastered this now. It's only one aspect you have to develop. So you become a godly person and your will is Allah's will. There's harmony. But, you know, Allah is the absolute perfection. So there are, there's always scope for continuous improvement and continuous. That's why trials never stop. The age of 40, 50 plus, you pass all these tri- good tri- you know, trials with good success. But there are always trials and history has taught us that even if you're very near to the Prophet or the, to the Imams and you've achieved so much in your life, there will still be trials in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you again. Are you aligning your will with my will or are you becoming a self-centric person? Iblis is a, is a famous example, right? Of a self-centric person. 
أحسنتم. He aligned his will with God's will through so many aspects of his life. عبد الله ستة آلاف عام. Six thousand years. Six thousand years, right? You don't know whether they are the years of this world or a different world. He's aligned his will with God's will. But when it came to one test, he slipped. And when he slipped, he never, he never returned to the Lord with regret. No, on the contrary, he said, "Now you have, now I'm misled. I've, I've disobeyed you. Keep me alive until I will misguide even more of the progeny of Adam." And that's that's the true that's that's the truth about him on the inside. That he aligned his will with God's will. So many aspects. Deep inside, it was still that you know at the core it was all about him, all about me, and we should not fall into that trap. Definitely, no one's more God centric than the Ahlul Bayt. I always you mentioned um, you know Salam. as aligning your will with the will of Allah, and it came to my mind you know Amir uh, Abi Abdullah Al Hussein alayhi salam's words Sha Allah and Yarani Qatila Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam knew about the events of Karbala but his will was aligned with the will of Allah hence he went towards that great sacrifice in Karbala and you mention also hope and that also brings about Imam Al Mahdi ajal Allah ta'ala farajah sharif and hope um How do you, or what should we do to remember Imam Al-Mahdi during these nights, the nights of Shah Ramadan? Ahsantim uh, Haji, an extension uh, from that hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just mm. like we said, uh, the month of Ramadan reveals mm. uh, our good potential. It should also remind us, exactly as you said, about our duties towards the Imam of the time. You know, I like to think of Uh, the relationship between Imam Mahdi Salamullah uh, and the month of Ramadan and in several aspects. One of them is the proximity we feel to the Imam. Um, I remember hearing one of the maraja' in, in, in a speech. He says, I wake up when I wake up for suhoor <clears throat> the month of Ramadan, I feel proximity to all the believers, to all the Muslims across the world. Physically, th there's a huge distance. However, everyone is doing the same thing. You feel close. You feel closer to each other. The same thing applies to the Imam. We are certain that the Imam, Salamullahi Ali, during this holy month, is fasting. And we're doing exactly the same thing. You know, and at Hajj, we feel at, prox at proximity because we know that he visits Hajj, mm. forms Hajj every year. Um, and you're doing exactly as the same thing as the Imam. Especially in Arafah. Ahsantum. Ahsantum. This proximity, whilst we're fasting and the Imam is fasting, you know, you feel that proximity to the Imam. You're doing something, you're doing exactly the same thing as your Imam. Wow. So this is one aspect. Mm. The other aspect is شهر رمضان والقرآن الكريم. Now, شهر رمضان is known to have is, is, is the main reason for the baraka. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. Mm. The month of Ramadan is the month. The Quran was revealed. أحسنت. It's a central event. ليلة القدر. So شهر رمضان والقرآن should remind us القرآن وأهل البيت. حديث التقلين. أحسنت. The two weighty things, Hadith al thiqlain The Prophet ﷺ has said clearly over so many occasions, I will leave you two weighty things. If you hold on them together, you will not be led astray. And in one of the versions of one of the versions of, of the hadith, that Al Kitab wal Itra, the book and Ahlul Bayt will not be separated until they come back to me on the day of judgment. Mm. Now, they can't be separated. We have the Qur'an with us in this Hayat al-Dunya. We must have at least one member of Ahlul Bayt, at least one Imam present, because they can't be separated. Mm. So if we are reciting the Qur'an, if we're learning the Qur'an, and, and this is a reminder to me and to the respected audience to maximize, live life to the, 
to its max and learn more about Islam and learn more about the Quran during this holy month. We really have the potential. There's so many apps there, there's so many resources that would teach you the Quran, would teach you Arabic. So we should we should really maximize our potential. So Shah Ramadan, Shah Al Quran, wa Shah Ahl Al Bayt. We have the twelfth Imam alive, hiding his identity, but he's living with us in this life. When we recite the Quran, we should remember him. And the third aspect is the Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr and Imam Mahdi. Laylatul Qadr is the central event which has given the month of Ramadan its barakah, khayr min al fishar. The Quran uh, was revealed during that night. However, Laylatul Qadr is a continuous event, it's an annual event. The angels and the ruh, the spirit. And we have a hadith to say that a ruh is a, is, a, is a creation who is even greater than the angels. In Tafsir al Mizan, he says, We have a hadith to say that the ruh, this creature, has several duties. One of them is, for example, to give life, one of them is to guide one of them is to support the believers so every year the angels and ruh the spirit they descend and where the do they imam. descend to the imam the imam of the time so when we are doing our a'mal when we are reciting the quran we remember ahl al-bayt we remember the one member of ahl al-bayt baqiyatullah who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left for us in this life to guide us and remember that the central event of the month, the central event of the year, is all about the angels and the spirit descending to him, descending upon him, supporting him, revealing to him the plan mm. for the upcoming year, surrounding him with blessings, surrounding him with support. So us as believers, we must connect with the imam. And we connect to him through the a'mal, through following divine guidance. We don't need to search for him physically. Um, you know what the imam wants from you. Go out and do it. How can you connect more with the imam during you know, these, these nights? Because now you've put things into great perspective that you're fasting, his fasting. He's, uh, or for example, you're on hajj. So now you're building... A connection with the Imam, um, and you feel a close proximity with the Imam. Allah Taala Farajah Sharif. What can you do more, even maybe after Shah Ramadan? Because we don't want to be, I don't want to be a Muslim that's only Shah, <laughs> a Muslim for Shah Ramadan. What can you do to connect with the Imam? Allah Taala Farajah Sharif. Ahsan Haji. The more we align our will with God's will, the more mm. God-centric we become. We must bear in mind that the Imam's will is nothing but an extension of God's will. No doubt. Okay? Ma'soom, ever free, mutahhar, purified, uh, chosen, Mustafa min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, a perfect human being chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, purified, and given, a, and given exclusive knowledge. That's the Imam, mm. given exclusive knowledge. This person represent God's will. You see, if you read the Quran, you will find a theme that all the prophets, Imams are not prophets, right? But they are extension, they are an extension of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you read the Quran, you will find a theme that the prophets are asking their nations, Ittaqullah wa ati'oon. Have taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey me. Obey me. I represent God's will. At the time of the Prophet, the Prophet represent God's will. So we have general guidance. Atay Allah wa Rasul. Ahsan. And then when you are in the presence of the Ma'asum, then his will is God's will. Walil Amr. Ahsan. So during the time of the Prophets, Prophets before Prophet Muhammad, during the time of Prophet Muhammad, alayhi, you surrender your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you surrender your will to the divinely chosen person so 
during our times, the times of labor, this exception, exceptional times, over a thousand years that we've lived, humanity has lived without direct access to the imam, we must train ourselves to be more God-centric, implement, learn about God's will, divine revelation, implement it, persevere, and have that state of mind all the time that I'm surrendering my will to Allah in accordance with the holy text that I, has, that I have received, with according to what the ulama has explained to me of that text, there's a gap between us and, and, and the time of the, uh, the text was revealed. And also my state of mind is that whenever the imam appears, I will also surrender my will to him. Um, it requires training. Definitely. This state of mind requires training. Mm. And even if we're not blessed to be amongst those who will be at the time of the imam when he reveals his identity, then the latest advice from the office of Sayyid Sistani is very clear about it. This advice was issued in the month of Sha'ban, just last month. Yeah. And towards the end, we will come back to it. Towards the end, this section clearly explains. Let the believers know that those who perform well, man ahsana intidara, those who perform well in waiting for the imam and preparing for the imam by reveal by following god's will by implementing divine guidance by associating ourselves with ahlul bayt kana dhalika dalilu sidqih living a god centric life will be a proof of how genuine this individual is Mm. This will be a true demonstration How genuine are we That we, we long to the Imam we, we want the Imam to appear And if you're honest If you're genuine فَهُوَ إِن لَمْ يَكْتُبِ اللَّهِ وَإِن لَمْ يَكْتُبْ لَهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ إِدْرَاكَهُ فَهُوَ مَحْشُورْ مَعَ مَنْ أَدْرَكَهُ If you're not, if God's wisdom decided that you will not be amongst those who will live during the time of the appearance, then you haven't lost anything. In fact, you have spent all your life being God-centric. You've aligned your will with Allah's will. You've, you've implemented Islam in your personal life. And then if the imam does not appear, then you will be on the day of judgment. And we, we, we spoke at the, at the beginning, this is exactly where you want to be. On the day of judgment, you will be in the same, uh, you know, the same section, the same abode, abode yes. as those who were with the imam. Mm. Again, Haji, I, I use this, which has come from the supreme uh, marja, supreme leadership of uh, the followers of Ahlul Bayt. I use it to remind myself and to remind the audience about the importance of the hereafter. I know we focus on Imam Mahdi for this life. Mm. Of course, he's the Imam of this time. However, whether it's Imam Al Mahdi, whether it's Imam Al Hussein, Salamullah, whether it's the Prophet, عليه, the focus is the final abode. Um, you want to be with Ahlul Bayt in the hereafter. You want to be with Ahlul Bayt in the hereafter. You may not be able to be with them during this life. We have the famous story of the companion who said to him, Oh, the Messenger of Allah, I can't see you that often. Life is, is harsh, is difficult. There is a distance mm. between us. I can't, I can't see you. I miss you, I yearn to it, but I can't see it. This is, this is the, someone who was living at the time of the Prophet. And the city of Medina was a few thousand people. So even the geography and the population wasn't that, you know, if you compare it to, to our time. Today, yeah. But he could not be with the Prophet all the time. So the Prophet said to him, Man ahabba qawman, mm. If you really love me, you will be with me. Not in this life. In the next. In the next life. So the focus is not this life. We should not be holding, we should not be, you know, our life should not be on hold until the Imam appears. Our life should continue God-centric with a state of mind that 
whenever the imam comes, here I am. I am surrendering my will to the Lord of the imam. I'm surrendering my will to whatever I've, I was taught about the will of his fathers and forefathers. So I'm training myself, I'm preparing myself. Just like the office of Sayyidina Sistani says, if you're genuine, then you either end up be with the imam in this life, or more importantly, you'll end up with the imam where it really matters. Where it really matters. I came across this uh, statement around the, the 15th of Sha'ban. I, I've seen it in Arabic. I think some people did translate it. and um, uh, I saw it also on social media. But I, I feel not a lot of people know about this statement. Amazing statement. Uh, it's Yeah, it's Adi. amazing. It's, it's, so uh, Sayyid Sistani, uh, may Allah bless him, has written points um about how you connect with Imam Al Mahdi, and I, 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 I believe the question that he was asked: What's your, what's the mu'min's obligation? I, I, I think Asante. towards Asante. the Imam. So if we can, it's quite a long letter uh, or statement. What are the main points that we can benefit from from uh, this this statement by the Marjaiya's office? Asante, Haji. Yurja bayan ma yarah Sayyidna Al Marja. The question was: Could you elaborate on? Uh, what are wadaif Shi'at Ahl al-Bayt? What are the duties of Ahl al-Bayt at the zaman of the Ghayba, at the time of the occultation? And I highly, just like you said, Hajj, I highly encourage the believers out there to search for it. It is translated in English, mm-hmm. it's available in Arabic. Again, I encourage the audience to learn Arabic. It will honestly unlock so many Definitely. doors. Uh, for us i will i will choose few points فان عليهم مضافا الى واجب معرفته والاذعان به والموده اليه in addition to knowing him والاذعان it's this state of mind mm. اذعان it's that state of mind of surrendering your will to him mm. now obviously you don't have any direct orders from the imam and in fact later on in in, in the answer it warns people it warns people mm. against those who claim any direct contact Text with them yeah and it's not a new phenomena yep. i know some uh, unfortunately these days because we don't read history that much every uh, deviation we see it as a disaster these things have happened mm. over the last 1000 years plus mm. people have claimed association with yep. the imam and yep. connection with the imam and direct contact with the imam and so on so you don't have any direct orders from the imam, but you you have a huge wealth of information what the imam wants from you, which is what Allah wants from you. The words of Allah in the Quran, the words of the Prophet, the words of Ahl al-Bayt, these are all the will of the imam. So go out there and implement it. Live life to the max. Try and implement as much of that as possible. But that state of mind that I am always at his service. Mm-hmm. I'm always surrendering my will to him. Wal Displaying this love and appreciation, right? Mm. Displaying it. Mawadda, you must display it. In addition to all that, أَيُكْثِرُوا مِنَ الدُّعَاءِ لَهُ فِي خَلَوَاتِهِمْ You must, in abundance, pray for him. Repeatedly. Whether you're alone or in your majalis, in congregations. It should be a habit for us in our households. To pray for the Imam. To obviously have God's remembrance, dhikrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always, not just Saturday school and the mosque. You know, the father, the father, the mother should be reciting the Quran. We should not be asking our children to attend Quran circles and they have never seen us praying a single page of the Quran. If it's so much sense, yeah. Okay? It's true. So if they see mom and dad reading the Quran, so they feel, okay, this is something useful. Otherwise, you're sending me to Saturday school. Why don't you do it? <laughs> and I've never seen you all. A'udhu <laughs> Billah. So, so, in the majalis or in the household when you're alone, remember the Imam. وَيَهْتَمُّ بِالشَّعَائِرِ The signs of Allah. Give attention and give respect and give importance to everything that revives the name of Ahlul Bayt. And remember what has happened to him, to the Imam, and to his, his forefathers. To his forefathers. Mm. Other points: mm. Let the believers 
always remember his struggle. Mm. You know, we see what's happening to uh, people out there, to the oppressed, the injustices that are happening, mm. and the length of these injustices. The Sayyid reminds us, Remember that he his struggle and the hardship he's in when he sees all madalim wa mafasid, he sees all these injustices corruption. and all this corruption and he's able to, he is the one who's able to really reform it and fix it and bring back justice. I mean, we, ha- we are frustrated that we know what's right. We may not be able to help, but at least we know what's right when we see these injustices. Mm. What about the man? Think of the man who not only knows what's right, but he's able to lead people mm. to reform it, correct it, and put an end to it. Think about his frustration when he, he yearns, he longs to he get a return. to reveal his identity, mm. to lead people. He knows how to do it. He knows what he knows what to do, and he knows how to do it. Yet he can't because of the circumstances, because of us partly. Uh, we are we are part of this, of course, part of the of the reason why he's not here. There are other cir- circumstances, of course, mm-hmm. but we, we we have a role to play. And then the advice continues, and another unique point. I say unique. Well, يعلم أنهم جميعا what a great point. Wow. That, that's proximity with the Imam. Let them know. Let them know, the believers, that they are all the focus of his attention and his care. Mm. He is more caring and more merciful towards them than their parents. Haji, I was really يعني, amazed of how explicit yeah, unbelievable. the office of the Sayyid have put it down, you know, yeah. in words. You can never find a relationship that is stronger than Your parenthood. Person, yeah. But the office is saying the Ma'soom, mm. the divinely chosen, Al Mutahar, Al Mustafa. Mustafa means the chosen one. Mm. He is more caring and more merciful towards you than your parents. Wow. Because he's ma'soom, because he's purified, because he's chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he's appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the guardian, as the imam, as the representative of God's will. And God is more merciful to us than our parents. 100%. But to kind of focus on the imam and to put it to these words, it's amazing. And this this is the, you know, this is our leadership, right? Yeah. This is who we follow. I take this opportunity to I'm stepping aside from 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 the letter from the adv- from the bayan the statement the advice just to remind the respected audience that you know follow the mainstream yeah okay the outliers those who've got just stay away from them ignore ignore follow the mainstream and you will be guided I'm not saying there are no differences Differences in, in knowledge and differences in opinions, but there are no differences in direction. If I'm not mistaken, the statement also says this. Ahsant. Later on in the statement, I, he Ahsant. also Ahsant. says, ignore the Ahsant. and s- stay to, with the ulama, the rightful leaders. If I'm not mistaken, it also says it as well, subhanAllah. I sent him, I sent him towards, towards probably the middle. Yeah. Uh, it says that. Don't be tricked into thinking I have access to knowledge, therefore I can make the interpretations. We're not closing the door. We're saying, you know, with COVID-19, everyone turned back to doctors Mm. for advice. Okay? When it's real, when people were dying. So do the same. The door is open. There's research out there. But if you want a firm opinion, ask the the specialist. Refer to the expert. Ask the specialist. Ask the mainstream. Follow the mainstream scholars. They may have differences in opinion, but they have no differences in direction. Unfortunately, the outliers do have a different direction. Mm. So beware, beware. And obviously the uh, the answer continues 
into a lot of depth. And one of the things that I really, that uh, really kind of uh, also uh, meant a lot to me is when the office of the Sayyid emphasizing on self-purification. Mm. That is in a section where it says, وَإِنَّمَا تَحْصُلُ طَاعَتُهُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ You obtain uh, the status of being a good follower of the Imam. The obedience. The obedience of the Imam. بالحفاظ على الإيمان والاعتقاد When you hold fast on your beliefs and not necessarily just people who are living in the West in a non-Muslim majority countries everyone but maybe specifically the people who live in a in a non-Muslim majority don't feel threatened mm. I know there's a lot of Islamophobia and there's lots of peer pressure out there don't feel threatened brothers and sisters الحق أقوى من الباطل Truth is stronger than falsehood mm. Light is stronger than darkness mm. We follow the light We follow a nur We follow the truth So no matter how much peer pressure And pressure on you to adapt your appearance Adapt um, your lifestyle to fit in with the majority, don't feel threatened. Remember that you have a living imam, you have you belong to a Muslim ummah, you have your own lifestyle, your God-centric view of the world, and hold fast on it and keep going. So, الحفاظ على الإيمان والاعتقاد Hold fast on your principles. وتعلم الوظائف الشرعية Let's all learn our religious obligations. We must learn, we must read. Mm. And the month of Ramadan, perfect opportunity. Perfect opportunity. The, mag- mm. the magnitude is multiplied. Mm. Learn a bit, and Allah will place a lot of barakah. Thumma al amalu biha. You learn about the religious obligations, but you must implement. The words are chosen very, very carefully. Delicate words by the same. You yeah. learn yeah. and you implement. Wal muwaaba alayha. You must persist. Mm. You hold fast on your principles. You learn your religious obligations. You implement them and you persist. You persevere. That's living life to the max now. <laughs> That's the max now. Okay. <laughs> Self-purification. Now I know there are people out there who are not mainstream mm. who are claiming to have a particular unique prescription or prescriptions for self-purification. Mm. This is the office of the supreme leader of the followers of Ahlul Bayt, saying, adhere to the mainstream guidance. Don't pick up a unique niche and try and follow it. If you deviate slightly from the mainstream, you will end up somewhere else. And history is full of examples of people who deviated slightly from the mainstream and ended up somewhere else mm. the Sayyid is saying self-purification but remember to adhere to the mainstream the words of the mainstream ulama there are no unique prescriptions the prescriptions are out there look at their lifestyle look at the zuhud look at look at how look at life to the max in dissociation with worldly pleasures you can be a great leader and not indulged in, 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 in the pleasures of this life. And you will be. A lot of people out there will be leaders within their household, within their communities. So stick to the mainstream. And then obviously it continues to talk about working with each other, helping each other, tawasi bil haq, tawasi bil sabr, and also specific advice about those who are financially able. Yeah. Um, the needy, helping the needy. If I, I'm not to. mistaken, he also mentions this. To. Specifically. Um, and then it continues, and I really encourage the believers to read it word for word, very carefully, because everything has a meaning. Ahsan Sayyidna, thank you very much for 
bringing this to light. Um, I did read it. I think it was sent to me at the beginning, and I thought, "Wow, this is amazing!" And I was surprised that not a lot of people had had heard about this statement. So, thank you for bringing it up. Um, it is on the Sayyid's website, I believe, and it's also translated. So, inshallah, our viewers. Um, can try and read that Especially during these nights of the holy month of Shah Ramadan uh, I'd like to, on behalf of the progeny team Thank you Sayyid Hassan As-Sadr For uh, joining us while you're fasting uh, May Allah accept your amal And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all To seek uh, proximity to him Through Imam Al-Mahdi Allah ta'ala Farajah Sharif And be more God-centric Thank you Sayyidina for your time Hassan, thank you very much